Hi kitty cats, it's Amethysta here. I'm gonna try something new. I'm gonna try sort of a raw format of video where I, I wanna talk about, you know, the things that, that came up during the week. I've got my little show notes here in a, in a laptop, but I wanted to say, I called this, I called my, my YouTube channel The Dingbat Diaries for a reason, because I wanted to pull stuff out of my actual diary and talk about them. So, these videos are going to be about ideas that sort of strike me during the week and uh, not other little pop-ups. Um, I'm going to try to release these weekly. I don't think these, ran these thoughts are completely random, but they're probably pretty close. Um, I kind of hope to make this a real stream, like actual, you know, to be able to engage with, with people in real time, but we'll see where it goes. I don't expect this to be really high production value, me, the camera, my laptop, but I hope that they represent sort of a journal for showing the evolution of my thought, just like my writing now over the past nine months has, has done. So. The agenda for this day, the Dingbat Diaries, on, let's see, July 13th, 2023. I want to talk about where Medium has gone recently and uh, how I need to diversify the content that I make. Um, that leads into the idea of actually, that I'm kicking around this idea of making a, a brand new publication. And I want to justify that at least a little bit by thinking about the, the way that I think, discussing the way I think, that I deal in abstractions. All right, so, Medium. So I've been writing on Medium now for nine months. So it would be so nine months and about a week. And I have met some amazing people on Medium. Um, and in fact, some of these, some of this, what I'm gonna say here has come from a conversation with and articles from Robin Wilding, who, by the way, if you haven't, like, subscribed to, to Robin, I'm going to put her, her Medium channel and her, um, her YouTube channel in the notes here to this, to this video. But if you do not know Robin, oh my gosh, you should. You know, she's an amazing person. She's hilarious. Getting off Robin here. Medium introduced something called the Boost. Now, some people have loved this and some people have hated it. It, it seems that people who have made a lot of money from the boost love it, and then kind of the rest of us hate it because views are kind of been down, they've been down across the board, at the very least on non-boosted articles. And somewhat interestingly, my last boosted article, which was yesterday, is performing sort of poorly. I find that kind of funny. I don't want to make an attack on Medium. Like I said, I, I do still like the platform, and I've met some really amazing people. You know, there, there's been Robin, there's been a lot of people I can't even name. Some of my very best friends today came, you know, through a relationship with Medium. So I don't want to dump on them. I think my life would be very much uh, poorer today if I had never started publishing on Medium. And I also want to, to say that I recognize very well that views and followers are not an indication of success, however you want to put that little quote, um, not an indication of success. They're not even an indication of like intelligent thought because they are AI generated articles that do really well on Medium. It's sort of, sort of crazy. But if I am not getting the views that I hope to, so I'm not building my, my following, I'm not getting more people to read what it is I have to say, I realize I've got to market myself. I don't mind marketing myself. I actually started thinking about this about January of 2023, and so here we are now in July. But there are two ways that I could go about doing this. One of them is I could try to change all of my writing patterns so that I get boosted on a very regular basis. Um, since the, the boost was introduced in, in February, I believe, of 2023, I've been boosted four times, one, one time yesterday, like I mentioned. So it's not a really regular thing. I could change the way I write, or what I could do is really honestly market myself. I do have social media uh, accounts. I do, I don't, I, I like interacting with people. 
But I guess I figure if I'm going to market myself, I want to market something. I want to market something you know that that I own. I want to market myself. I don't want to market Medium. I love Medium. I'm not going to shill for them. So moving into the next topic here, I am considering creating a new publication, so a new website that is a publication. I don't want to compete with Medium, but I do want to have a place where my my thought goes, as well as Medium. I don't intend to to, um, to abandon them completely, but I intend to make a new publication that is dedicated to thoughts around identity, particularly a focus on on gender theory. Now, it's a good question to ask here. Why would you make a website about gender theory? I recognize there are a lot of LGBTQ news sites out there. I don't want to compete with with um, the excellent work that's already being done, because I can name a few of them. You know, I, I guess I won't. I don't want to. <laughs> anyway, I'm not going to. So there are many news sites out there that I don't want to compete with. But I believe that gender as an aspect of identity continues to be very poorly understood in Western society. Our understanding of gender is 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 very kind of stunted, at least relatively relative to how biologists think of the distinction between between sex and gender. When we think about gender as as uh, you know, if you were to look at it out there in the in the world, we see it as kind of this esoteric, kind of academic, philosophical, dry pursuit that that really lacks in value. I don't think that's true. But I think there are many who, who view gender studies as kind of this philosophical navel-gazing kind of activity. It's the kind of thing that when Matt Walsh makes a documentary slamming, you know, great people in gender studies, he is not sued for libel. So I find that very interesting. But I think that gender studies are kind of poorly explained. The purpose for gender studies are kind of poorly explained. They also tend to focus on aspects of humanity that very few, well, I want to say very few, but not everybody, it's, not everybody experiences. They, um, a lot of times gender studies focuses on feminism, which any feminist will tell you is very difficult to represent in the patriarchy. Uh, and gender study also, gender studies also tend to focus on queer theory or homosexuality in society, transgender in society, things like that. So, so this is why I think they're seen somewhat as academic pursuits and, you know, as, as something that lacks value. I disagree. I believe that gender in society is, is a huge factor. I believe gender colors every perception that enters into us through our social environment, and I believe it, co it colors every expression coming out of us into our social environment. That's how important gender is. Gender is a very common human experience, the kind of thing necessary to a society. It's important to every member of, a, of the society, and we understand it, but we do not understand it explicitly. And that's what I would like to change. So moving to my final topic here, I had a conversation, yeah, I had a conversation with AJ Crowley earlier this, uh, today, and she was talking while well, I want to go into the whole conversation. The point is we had a conversation and I realized she was talking about particular implementations of something. And I always think about them in terms of abstractions. Um, what I like to do is, is think about and discuss the underlying thought behind implementations. As an example, we could take gender, you know, gender studies. Um, I think about the underlying thought of gender, that it is a, a human experience, and a lot of the focus has been on its implementation in society. So I'm thinking at a slightly different you know, coming at it from a slightly different direction. But I believe 
that practical implementations are affected by the quality of the underlying thought. Or, I don't want to say quality. What I want to say is the how explicit the underlying thought is. Um, in the, the, what I write, I try to portray gender, and in particular, transgender, as a typical human experience. You know, I've talked about struggles that I've had that I think many people could relate to, despite the fact that I am transgender and they are not. Um, I would love to love for society to do to view me and my experience not through my lens, just to tell my story, but through their lens, so that they see me as one of them, I guess as it were. I want my experience to be seen as no different from any common human experience. And this is sort of played out by my um by my website, where the, the, the slogan across the top of it says making transgender normal since 2022, because that's what I want to do. Because I think transgender is normal. I think thinking about gender is normal. So I believe gender is a, a universal experience. Gender is not limited to the ideas of homosexuality, to the ideas of, of transgender. And I think that if we can change this perception, to go back to what I was talking about when I was when I said I think in abstractions, if we change the perception of gender, we can change the implementations downstream of it. So I tend to think like that and try to try to make these very foundational, fundamental uh, changes there, so that any building that gets built on it is different from what we've seen, you know, over the last say 1400, 1500 years from the medieval era, era uh, forward. So, I think that was the Dingbat Diaries for July 13th. I just want to, uh, to close this out by saying, hopefully you enjoyed this a little bit. I don't know if this is all gonna work. I don't know if making a, a website's even going to work, but um, if you are interested in contributing to this website, I invite you to leave some comments. I invite you to uh, reach out to me through my website. I will have a, a link to it in the show notes. And then I also want to mention, if you liked this at all, please hit the like button. Please subscribe to the Dingbat Diaries. And then if you're really ready to go nuts, please visit my Substack publication. Again, there will be a link in the notes and you can subscribe there. Uh, I guess with that, thank you so much. And um, we'll see you next week, hopefully, hopefully with some really intelligent and interesting thoughts around gender theory and, you know, just kind of the stuff I do on an everyday basis, which actually is not always dry and philosophical, although kind of a lot of it is. Okay, bye.